Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Electronic gaming has become one of the largest forms of entertainment in the world. 1.5 billion PC gamers, 20 million live streamers, 45 million content creators, and 500 million esports viewers. That is, in a word, impressive. The world of electronic gaming has grown larger than music, movies, and many real-world sports. With 20% of the entire population of the planet now engaged in PC gaming, and perhaps closer to one-third of the entire population when console gamers are added in, this really is the new thing when it comes to personal entertainment. Humans have always sought forms of entertainment throughout history, from stories around campfires to the Olympics of ancient Greece, to the gladiator games of Rome, to kids running around and playing tag, perhaps the oldest game in history. Today, we have electronic games that have advanced in less than one human lifetime from the basic Pong and Space Invaders of the 1970s to virtual reality worlds with billions of polygons worth of detail and trillions of calculations per second producing works that are so real it can be hard to tell the difference between a photograph and a virtual image. Thanks to new advances such as Unreal Engine 5 and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, the promise of photorealism has finally arrived in a form that lives up to the hype. To be sure, we're still at the early stages and it isn't perfect yet. However, the days of running around in Tomb Raider in 1996 with detail that was closer to a 1980s cartoon only hinted at what was possible. Compare that to the Unreal Engine 5 demo, which is effectively a modern-day Tomb Raider done right. Likewise, Microsoft Flight Simulator 95, ironically released in 1996, has come a long way from the almost real-looking, but not really, world to the modern day, which is so real it's hard to tell sometimes you're looking at a computer-generated world. Touring, or RTX 20 series, was the first generation of RTX technology and it offered up some impressive numbers. 11 shader teraflops, or trillions of floating point operations per second, 34 RT, or ray tracing teraflops, and an amazing 89 tensor teraflops. All very impressive numbers. But those numbers don't always translate into frames per second in a straightforward way, as games have to be updated to use new technology, and there's an efficiency loss as you add complexity to any system. RTX 2080 Ti was a solid performance jump over GTX 1080 Ti. However, its higher price point did remove some of the value it offered to upgraders, causing many to keep their 1080 Ti cards for another generation. To a lesser extent, the same is true of RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080. Today, NVIDIA has announced RTX 30 series, known as Ampere, with two cards coming on September 17th and one more coming in October. The top-end flagship card numbers are impressive. A jump from 11 shader teraflops on the RTX 2080 to 30 shader teraflops on the RTX 3080. That is a 2.7 times increase, nearly 3x. That's impressive. 34 ray tracing teraflops were available on the 2080. A whopping 58 teraflops on the ray tracing cores are available on the 3080, a 1.7 times increase. And finally, 89 tensor teraflops on the 2080 becomes 238 teraflops on the 3080. Again, a 2.7x increase on the tensor or AI cores between a 2080 and a 3080. Notice I didn't say 2080 Ti or 3080 Ti. We'll, we'll get back to that. But 3080 is the flagship card in the new lineup. Those are huge number gains. How they translate to real-world performance remains to be seen. Rest assured, we'll test that as soon as the cards launch. NVIDIA is claiming up to 2x faster overall performance in both games and compute from the 20 series to the 30 series. So that's an impressive claim. 
Some other specs to consider include 28 billion transistors. Wow. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll be here a while. Samsung's custom eight nanometer production process, and perhaps the star of the spec show, Micron's new GDDR6X VRAM. Yes, I said 6X, not 6. More about that in just a second. Another new technology is RTX IO. This allows for streaming game content directly from your SSD to the GPU's memory, completely bypassing your CPU and your main system RAM. This allows for real-time decompression of textures and game data on the GPU without your CPU or your main system RAM becoming a bottleneck. The new flagship card is considered the $699 RTX 3080, despite the existence of the 3090, which is really a Titan replacement given its $1,500 price tag. The 3080 has dual fans in a new arrangement that brings innovation to cooler design. The front fan is bracket exhausting, blowing air outside of the case, and the top fan is flow through, blowing hot air straight up and creating a better case airflow pattern, assuming you have proper case fans set up to run air from the bottom front to the top rear of your case. The new GDDR6X is twice as fast as GDDR6, transferring four bits per cycle versus two bits on GDDR6. Why this isn't called GQDR6, I'm honestly not sure, because it sounds a lot more like quad data rate memory to me, but they're calling it PAM4 or PAM4, pulse amplitude modulation with four voltage steps per cycle, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1 are all possible uh, voltage steps, which are only 250 milliamps apart. In short, it's really fast RAM. PCI Express Gen 4 is supported along with HDMI 2.1. The latter brings 4K 120Hz and 8K 60Hz support to HDMI. The former ensures plenty of room for moving data from Gen 4 NVMe drives directly to the GPU using the new RTX I.O. In addition, new technology is being added in the form of NVIDIA Broadcast, NVIDIA Reflex, NVIDIA Studio, and more. NVIDIA claims the RTX 3080 is twice the performance of the RTX 2080 and more than 50% faster than an RTX 2080 Ti. It will start at $699 and is available September 17th. Moving down one price bracket, we have the new RTX 3070 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 minus the X. It will be slightly faster than the RTX 2080 Ti and start at $499 and will be available sometime in October. Moving up several price brackets, we have the new RTX 3090 with 24 gigabytes, wow, of GDDR6X. What Jensen called a BF GPU. Those of you who are Doom fans, the original version anyway, will know exactly what he is referring to. The numbers go even higher here, 36 shader teraflops, 69 ray tracing teraflops, and 285 tensor teraflops. Those numbers are impressive. However, they are not so far beyond the 3080 to really justify the $1,500 price point. The reason to get the 3090 is VRAM, VRAM, and lots and lots of VRAM. Is it a deal? No, it really isn't from a price to performance point of view. The raw specs alone indicate that the RTX 3080 is the deal. But for those of you who have a need for 24 gigs of VRAM, you have the option. Having said all that, clearly Nvidia has left themselves some room for an RTX 3080 Super or TI at some point with more VRAM. Rumors of 12 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, and even 20 gigabyte versions of the 3080 have been popping up. So I don't think this is the end. If you're on RTX 20 series now, perhaps take a wait and see approach. In six months, we may get higher VRAM cards for a bit more, or perhaps super versions with more power for the same price. On the other hand, if you're on 10 series or below, 
it is indeed time to upgrade if you're playing new games at high resolutions. GTX 1070 and 1080 owners have a real option to upgrade to with up to three times the performance for a similar price to what those cards launched at just four years ago. It is worth remembering that AMD will fire back at NVIDIA with Big Navi, also known as RDNA 2, in October, the same time the 3070 launches. Expectations are high, but only time will tell if they can keep up with Ampere or if they'll be once again playing second fiddle to the green team. For all our sake, I hope they bring their A game so we have a real competition on our hands, the real winners of which are all of us. Looking further out, Intel is launching XE next year on the TSMC 6 nanometer process, ready to enter the dedicated video card market. We might well see a three horse race if they can release a competitive product that is worth considering for gamers. Only time will tell how that works out. What do you all think about Ampere's launch information? Are you looking at buying one on launch day, waiting for Big Navi, or perhaps even waiting for Intel's dedicated cards next year? I look forward to reading your comments in the comments section below. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to the channel with the big huge red button directly below. You know where the comment section is, links in the video description. I'll put a link to NVIDIA's launch event if you wanna watch the entire live stream. I'll put a link to their website with some more details. And of course, all of our other regular links are down there as well. Twitter, Twitch, our tech deals, Discord, and many more. If you love our content and wanna support us, smash that join button. You can support for either two or $5 a month with different levels of benefits, including private access to the Tech Deals Discord and over 65 private behind the scenes and bonus videos for gold level supporters. Hit that join button for more information. And if you're able to, please consider supporting us. Thank you so much for watching this. I will see all of you next time.